Thank you. Thank you, Gerilyn. Uh, my great friend and colleague, Nick Lembo, has uh, received countless awards and commendations over the years, uh, almost 40 of them if you want to count. Uh, and I think this is probably the first time in his life that he's going to receive an award for excellence in planning. Uh, yes, some of you might say, yes, I know about Monadnock, uh, one of the preeminent GC co companies in the city, and, and I know about Capsis, uh, you know, an innovative modular company in the Brooklyn Navy Yard, but, but excellence in planning, Nick? Uh, well, for those of you who know Nick, you know, he's not one to talk about his accomplishments and uh, I would probably suggest that a good bottle of Italian wine is the only way that you're going to get him to even start on that. Uh, things you might not know about Nick is that he's a, a graduate of the Cornell School of Architecture. He's on more not-for-profit boards and supports more community organizations that help improve New Yorkers' lives than you can count. And um, his intensity to learn and his desire to learn new things uh, is so strong, but you would never guess it by looking at his calm, cool exterior. Uh, so back to planning. Webster defines planning as the establishment of goals, policies, procedures for a social or economic unit. But what they left out from the definition is that in order to have excellence in planning, it has to come to fruition. Uh, from where I stand, the ability to foresee and adapt to an ever-changing environment along with the willingness to make things happen, that's the hallmark of excellence in planning. Nick has positively impacted the lives of many, many thousands of people in New York City by producing some of the best affordable housing the city has ever seen through Monadnock and through Capsis, and by creating new neighborhoods where they didn't used to exist. And also, you know, by thoughtfully seeking out strategies and technologies that have worked elsewhere in the country uh, and bringing them home and putting them to work here in New York City. Uh, Nick's work for me is absolutely the definition of what excellence in planning is supposed to be. And, and I'll leave you with one line about Nick that, uh, that shows up in the Capsis company profile, which I think sums up the essence of who Nick is. And it reads, we commit to being proud of the work we do and we give you every reason to be proud to work with us. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to award the CHPC Impact Award for Excellence in Planning to my good friend, Nick Lembo. Thank you, Les, for that uh, completely over-the-top introduction. Uh, on, by on behalf of my partners and all the folks at Monadnock and myself, I want to thank CHBC and all of you for this honor. I'd also like to congratulate the other honorees, my friend Bill Trailer, Bank of America, Rich Froelich, and John Garrity. I'm proud to be here with them. So I've got a CHPC joke. A, a lawyer, a banker, and a housing official are in a bar. Who walks in but a tax credit syndicator? The tax credit syndicator says, I can't read this here, I'm sorry. I'll just get on with the rest of the speech. I know this will sound peculiar, but I feel fortunate to have had my career begin at a time when New York City was at rock bottom. It would have been a very different career had it begun 20 years earlier or 20 years later. I'd like to take a few minutes to talk about some of the things that I've seen and that many here are too young to remember. New York City was a very different place in 1975 when I went into business. It would be unrecognizable to some of you. But the decline of the city was actually a long-term opportunity. I was born here in the city and come from a large family of almost 75 people, grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, siblings, and parents. When I was a kid, they all lived in New York City. In fact, at one time, they all lived in Brooklyn. By the time I finished college, they had almost all moved away to Long Island, Westchester, New Jersey, and Florida. My parents, my sisters, virtually all my aunts, uncles, and cousins. 
I don't think there were five of us left here. It was at this point that I went into business. The recession we have recently been passing through would have seemed like a boom in comparison. Uh, construction companies that had been in business for generations were closing down. Most people at any level in construction, architecture, or real estate were out of work. I remember the city when the Bronx was burning. I was working in the South Bronx when the blackout and riots hit in 1977. I remember the abandoned buildings and the rubble-strewn lots vividly. I was in them and on them. This housing industry represented by all of you here today was a small fraction of the size it is now. In 1980, I won an RFP at HPD to develop and build 220 units. I'm not sure, but it may have been the largest of HPD's projects at the time, and there weren't too many other projects. The industry was a lot smaller. There are a number of things that have changed the city, but one of the most important, in my opinion, among them was the city's decision in about 1985 under Ed Koch to intervene in housing. That intervention, intervention has continued right up to the present time under Mayor Bloomberg. But the world of housing and construction was different back in 1980s. On some projects, I had a super shadowed by an off-duty cop carrying a semi-automatic shotgun they used to call a street sweeper. And some of the supers carried their own guns. On a number of occasions, we sealed up crack houses on blocks where we were working. Sometimes the police helped. Sometimes we just did it on our own. We painted copper pipes black to fool the thieves so they wouldn't steal them. Sometimes it didn't work. When we did rehabs, we had to clear the drug needles before starting demolition. On one project, we found a dead body when we started. I could regale you for hours with stories about the crazy, dangerous, and often funny things that happened back then that don't seem to happen as often anymore, but I'll spare you. Well, if you want to have drinks sometime, I might tell you these stories and I'll finish that CHPC joke too. <laughs> Most projects were just a drop in the bucket, but if you keep putting drops in a bucket, it will eventually fill up. We would renovate a building on a block where most of the buildings were abandoned, but then someone would renovate those other buildings too. Sometimes we followed others on those blocks. We built the first houses to go up in Bedford-Stuyvesant in generations, but many more were built afterwards. The change was very incremental, but as I have seen it at the bottom, and over a long period of time, it seems enormous to me. It was a revolution in slow motion. There are many people in this hall who saw it and were part of it. Together we have made this city a much better place to live and to work. It's been a privilege and it's been very rewarding to be part of this renaissance and the resurgence of New York City. I now keep meeting people who have moved to New York from all over the country and all over the world. It is the place to be. Now my cousin's kids want to come back. Thank you for listening. Thank you for the honor and enjoy the rest of the event.